In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at something that they call a walrus operator. And this is a recent addition in Python 3.8, which allows us to combine expressions and assignments. So let's take a look at how this actually works. And to demonstrate this, I went ahead and created a text variable, which holds this is a very long sentence as a string. And what we want to do is get some info about this text. So to do this, I'm going to first start by creating a dictionary. And this is going to be the first example on how we can use this walrus operator. So the first thing we want to do is create a key which says words. And here we're going to go ahead and split those words. So we're going to be using the walrus operator for this. So we're going to go ahead and say that the words are going to be walrus operator, which is a colon followed by an equal sign text dot split. So what this is actually doing is assigning words the result of this over here while displaying what it returns. So this would actually be the equivalent to creating words out here and saying text dot split and just inserting the words here by itself. So what it saves us there is having to write this out on a separate line. So let's go ahead and remove that. And if we go ahead and print the info, you're going to notice that we're going to get a return of the words inside the dictionary. Now that part is not really that impressive, but what is impressive is that when we go ahead and create another key, we can go ahead and create another version of the always operator. So here we go ahead and use that again and say that we want to count the characters. And the way we are going to count the characters is by joining the words in words. So here we'll go ahead and insert the words. Now when we go ahead and run this, we're also going to have a character display of 24. And as you saw there, that was the real power of the walrus operator. We were able to assign and display this variable and we were able to use it directly after because now that we have assigned it, of course we can use it. And this can save us the trouble of having to write this all manually out before the dictionary. So it's just a nice convenience in Python. And let's go ahead and say average characters per word, for example, and that should be a string. And we're going to round the characters divided by the length of the words to two decimal places. And this should be parentheses. And when we run this, we're also going to get the average characters per word, which is 4.0. So that's one of the very easy ways to use the walrus operator. And I'm just going to provide one more example. Let's go ahead and pretend we have a name which is called Mario and we have an empty name, which of course has nothing in it. And what we're going to do is check whether there's a name and if there is a name, we're going to assign it. Otherwise, we're not going to assign it at all to a variable. So here we're going to go ahead and type in if the temporary name walrus operator has a value inside empty name, then we're going to assign that. Or if it has a value in name, then we're going to assign that to temporary name. And this will only have a variable assigned to it if the expression returns true. So if we go ahead and print the temporary name, you'll see that we will have Mario printed out because only Mario evaluates the true. If both of these are empty strings, then nothing's going to print out. We can actually go ahead and say, print executed. So we can see that the if statement was executed or not. So both of these are false, which means we have nothing that's assigned to this variable. And once again, the walrus operator makes sure that there's actually a value assigned to it before attempting to do any kind of assignment. And if we change empty name to empty, it's going to print that out because empty evaluates to true since it is not empty and it's going to assign it to temp name, which we can then print out here. So it's a very good way to try to use a variable if it exists. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover regarding the walrus operator. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to look at them. But with that being said, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.